I'm Charlene Habermeyer, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents Under the Umbrella of Good Parenting, Brighter Children. Today we're going to talk about why service should be an important family tradition. I really feel like one of the most important things as parents, like I've been talking about the importance of reading to your children, exposing them to music, getting them play a musical instrument, having those important traditions. I think this one is right there at the very tippy top. The reason being is, you know, when kids are young, even when they're teenagers, they tend to be pretty narcissistic. You need to give them opportunities where they are doing something for somebody else other than themselves so that their entire world doesn't revolve around them. They need to do that. It's an important lesson that they need to learn while they're young or they'll grow up to be narcissistic adults and no one will want to be around them. So it is really important and it doesn't have to be a huge time co commitment, but let me tell you one thing about service. It is never convenient. I'm going to repeat that again. It is never convenient. It is difficult to find those opportunities and find those examples of when you can do and give service, but they are out there and there's a lot of them. I'm going to share some books with you and help you. Now, it can be as simple as baking cookies with your kids and then having them take it to different people in the neighborhood that you know may have a need, or maybe they just had a new baby and they need a meal brought in, so get your kids involved in helping with that meal. Maybe you live near a retirement home where a lot of those people are lonely, that they don't get out, they don't have visitors. Take your family over there and teach your children, you know, go up to these people. We're going to go up, we're going to talk to them, we're going to ask them about questions about themselves, about their lives. Those are all easy things. Have them write a note of gratitude to their school teachers. I mean, teachers would love that, uh, to know that their students actually appreciate the many, many things that they are doing. So there's a lot of easy things that you can do. There's a wonderful book on service. It's entitled The Spirit of Service. This gives you all different kinds of ideas, and I love what they say in the very first page. They say, no one could make a greater mistake than he who did nothing because he could do only a little. Many people say, well, I can't really do anything because I don't have the money. I'm on a really strict budget. But for even as less as $5, like when I talk about getting your kids to make a batch of cookies, I don't even think that would even cost $5 to make a batch of cookies. When I was teaching college, I uh, introduced to my students, I, they were all on very strict budgets, and I said for even $5 and $10, you can become part of the microcredit movement. In the 1970s, a man by the name of Muhammad Yunus, he was a professor at Chittagong University in Bangladesh, and he was talking to his students about actually about business and so forth. And so they went out into the community and they saw women who were trying very, very hard to start these businesses so that they could help provide for their families. But the problem was is that they borrowed money from loan sharks and they set the price on what they were selling and they set the price on how much money they had to pay back. So Muhammad Yunus started what is called the microcredit movement, where they give little tiny loans, some of them as small as $10, to women in third world countries so that they can start businesses, so that they can help to support their families. And it's amazing. And so I did some research and I found, because um, we were talking about physiology, and that I was talking to my students particularly about skin physiology. So I found a microcredit movement that they were harvesting coconuts uh, and coconut oil in uh, different places in Africa and they needed to now take this oil and to make it into something and so they were doing an entire skincare line and many of my students became involved in this for ten dollars, an investment of ten dollars which is nothing. So this particular book is called The Price of a Dream and it talks about the microcredit movement and there's many many other different um, books out there that talk about the microcredit movement particularly if you have kids that are in college or in high school. Let's talk about younger kids for a minute. I don't know how many of you know about the Heifer International Organization, but several years ago this book came out entitled Beatrice's Goat. And it's about a little girl who through Heifer International, her family gets a goat. And Heifer International explains to them of how they're going to milk the goat each day. And they're going to measure in a measuring cup that everybody in the family gets one third cup of that goat's milk. And the rest of the goat's milk they're going to sell. Well, most, Beatrice lives in a home that, you know, that's a dirt floor, and a lot of the schools that there were available are not free, like we have public education here in the United States. 
but being able to have that goat and being able to milk the goat every day and to sell that goat's milk enabled her little family to number one they went from a dirt floor to they were able to have linoleum down on their floor and number two their children were able to go to school I love this book and I read this book to my children and then that year at Christmas time we met together as a family and we talked about Heifer International. We talked about helping kids that they didn't even know about in other countries. So I contacted Heifer International to find out exactly how they work and you can pick as a family any kind of an animal that you want to purchase and then they will send that animal to a needy family in a third world country or in a country where they're um, in need of an animal so that they can pay for their children's education, so they can pay for food to put on the table for their children. And so our children that year, we, they, we, we went around and every person in the family, they picked out an animal. So that was pretty much their Christmas, was purchasing an animal for someone else. Look for opportunities in your area. I know my son now is an adult. He and his wife are involved with the refugee program. Some of that is very simple. I know that one time what they were asked to do is to bas basically go out and they were babysitting goats, pregnant goats, and the mothers when they went into labor, somebody had to be there to help with the labor of the mother goat. They also helped uh, at a place where they made uh, different people from the refugees were making different types of food and they were selling them and, and so my son and his wife, they were at the cash register. It was a pretty simple thing but it helped them to understand how much we here in America, we have so much and it, these are opportunities to, to reach out and to do something for someone else. It comes back to you a hundredfold after you go out and do something for someone in need. It's really interesting how it comes back, how that whole thing comes full circle and the feelings of gratitude and feelings of goodness that you've done something good to help someone else. So look in your community. Again, this book is called The Spirit of Service. It gives all kinds of ideas here right in your very community, right in here in your own United States of things that you can do. Make this an important part of your family's traditions and you will see a huge difference with your children. You'll see a softening with them. You'll see more compassion and understanding. Their emotions will be more stable as they realize that there are, there are always people who are in greater need than themselves. So parents, look for great opportunities that you can get your kids involved in service. Especially around holiday time, there's a huge need. And again, you can get involved in service in very small and simple ways that will have a huge impact in someone else's lives. Let me leave you with a fun quote by Dr. Seuss. He said, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow.